Hey guys, we often say that better is the enemy of great. I think that is very true when we talk photography because back in the day when we shot film, it was different. Um, it was more about the looks, the grain, and the feeling that you would get in a picture. More than how many megapixels, what's the resolution, what's the sensor, how much of an improvement it is, how much can you crop in, how much can you zoom, and all, all that. A company called Dehancer reached out to me and they proposed to review a product which is particularly awesome, and I'm gonna tell you why in just a second. The Hanser, which was established in 2014, is a company that basically creates a plugin for DaVinci Resolve and for Lightroom and Photoshop. They soon will come out with a version for Final Cut Pro, which I can't wait to get my hands on. So at first, I thought this was just another plugin to basically convert your photos into something that looks like it came out straight out of this camera. However, once you test this plugin, you will not want to go back. The grain simulation that they implemented with this plugin is absolutely out of this world. And I'm gonna show you all of this in Lightroom later on, but I just wanna say that this really is an impressive plugin. So what you get with this plugin is 62 film profiles, so film stock. And the cool thing is when you buy a license, you get free updates and if they come out with new profiles, you will have them for free. So you get different categories such as color negative, uh, color positive, black and white, instant, and so on and so forth. In terms of film stock, you get Fuji Color, Agfa, Cinesteel, Kodak, Rolay, uh, Ilford, etc. So you get all the main, coolest, most popular film stock. And as I said before, this is bar none, the best I used for grain specifically. Here are a few examples showing the raw file and the photo after it went through the enhancer. But what about, for example, Fujifilm that has film stocks? When you buy a Fuji camera, you get different Fujifilm stocks and simulations that basically simulate how they used to be on film. Uh, how do they look if you compare the Hanser with Fuji? Here you go. The Hanser is a company that has been doing and shooting and developing film for over 30 years. So I do not know all the specifics as to what the technicality is uh, behind everything that they do. I'm gonna link down below um, the articles where you can go and check yourself to see why the Hanser is better than a lot. Because we, most of the photographers use presets or lots um, which is basically a layer that you put on top of your photo and that gives you that specific look that you're looking for and that you want to put on your photos. But this is more in depth because for example, the grain, uh, it goes through several layers and several processes and they have an algorithm that works differently for every photo. It's not just a copy and paste co a cookie cutter that you just put on top. So you can really play with grain, halation, uh, CMY color heads, blooming effect, vignetting, Push-pull, and by the way, push-pull, for those that don't know, is not uh, exposure, is more the contrast of the photo, which usually has some color shifts a little bit when you push and you pull, and this is actually happening in this program, which is utterly insane. Before I go in Lightroom and show you how it works, I just wanted to show you a couple samples of photos with the preset from Jamie Windsor, which uh, I bought a package from for Kodak Portra 400, which is the preset that I used for all of my weddings lately. At this last year, I've been using it for all of my weddings. And I wanna show you how his preset, which by the way is utterly insane, how similar it looks to actual Portra on film, how it looks compared to the Hanser for Portra 400. Here you go.
All right, so for this demonstration, I imported three photos. There is a church, a bride, and a photo of Venice. I shot these photos last year, and we're going to see how they look with the Hanser. So we're gonna take the church one. So we're gonna go here, say edit in, and we're gonna select the Hanser. It's going to edit a copy of the photo, not directly the original. And I'm gonna set it to JPEG. All right, so this is what you're gonna see when you open the program. Up to the top left corner here, you have the film type. So favorites, you can select here uh, on each of the styles, you can put a little heart, and it's gonna go into the favorites. So if I go on my favorites, I have a bunch of them. Then we go on color negatives. So you have all these color negatives. You have color positive, motion picture, black and white, instant, and so on. So we're going to go on color negative and I'm going to choose the Kodak Portra 400, for example, which, as I said, is one of my favorite film stock. So this is how it looks before and after. So it already looks very good. You can go through the photo and see how it looks before and after. There you go. So now we're gonna start playing around a little bit. So up here you have the different uh, options. So you can change the color temperature, obviously. So you can go cooler or warmer. The tint, so these are basic set settings. Up to the corner here you can push and pull. So you can see how the saturation, and there is a bit of a color shift that happens when you push and you pull, which is normal. That's basically what happens when you're pushing and pulling a film. You can defringe and do a bunch of options. The black point can be changed like so. I'm gonna leave it where it is. Same for the white point, same thing, leave it there. All right, so print here, you can choose the type of paper. So you can go, you, you can have the glossy paper, which is the one I usually choose, but you can also choose the Kodak 2383 print film like so, and you can see how your photo looks very much like a, an analog photo on film. So I'm gonna go back to the glossy paper. Here is where you can change the exposure if you want to change a little bit the settings, the tonal contrast to make it more filmy like, like so. You see how it looks a bit more faded. Now if uh, you use the analog range limiter, it will keep it as it would be if you're actually shooting on film, which is something I normally activate. You can change the density, you can see the skies here, how they become bluer or less blue. I'm going to put a little bit more density. There you go, and now it's where the magic happens. Film grain, so I'm going to zoom here and check what happens when you put some film grain. There you go. This to me is mind-blowing, before and after. You see a difference? For example, these people walking here, um, the door, the weed here is way, way more film-like. And it gives that extra something to the photo that really makes it not look digital, which is what I've been trying to do for a while now. Um, you can change the size so you can have, look, as I move here, you can see the size. So if you put it big, it really looks like there's a lot of grain and it's, it's, it's a big grain. Uh, the amount, so you can choose how much grain you want. So make it very grainy or less grainy. I like to leave it pretty much where it is, add a little bit bigger um, grains. That's something I like to do. One important thing here is the resolution. So right now I'm at 50%, which means that it cuts down half of the resolution. This was shot on the next T3 of Fujifilm. So it's 26 megapixels. Now, if I, if I have that, we're gonna be at around 13 megapixels. The resolution is gonna be halved. Now I like to reduce this even more and really give it a film like, because back in the day when we shoot on film, um, the resolution would not be megapixels, it would be grain. The grain is what makes the, the picture. So I reduce the resolution even more. And here you can play around if you want more or less grain in the shadows, in the mean tones, in the highlights, uh, the color. So you can really tune your photos as you like them to be. Here you can change the color head. So you see on the blue, the yellow, the green, magenta, etc. I like to gang. So you basically have them all three together and when you move one, it moves everything together. Um, there you go, halation. So this basically adds some sort of fringing. I'm gonna show you here, the before and after. You see around here, for example, how it becomes like here. It basically changes the way the, the light looks on certain surfaces and the corners of certain surfaces, like metal, for example. You can go in mask mode and see exactly what's happening. You can uh, change the diffusion globally or the, the, where is it? The, you can amplify it. 
and it will be more or less and you can see it here that it becomes way more apparent uh, everywhere if, if i remove it there you go so that again gives it a, a, a massive uh, analog look you can put some blooming effects for the highlights mainly as you can see over here if i remove this I don't usually use this effect. I don't li like it as much. It becomes a little bit too much, but you have it. Vignetting. So here, what I like to do is you change the feather size at around here. So you can see exactly where your vignette is and you can change the size. You can change the aspect ratio if you wanted more oval or, you know, uh, more round, you can go like this. And then you put some feathering again and you can change how much of it you want. There you go. So those are the main um, settings that you can put on your photos. This is the after, this is the before, and here you go. This really looks like an analog uh, film shot, like really. <laughs> I can't stress that enough. All right, you have some other things that are really cool here. On top you have here, you have the preset. And for example, here I'm going to create a new preset, so I'm going to say plus, and I'm going to call this Kodak Portra 400 Church um, Wedding. There you go. We're going to keep everything, all the settings and add preset. Now you can see it here. So what this does is it's really cool actually because it creates a little uh, thumbnail that shows um, the preset with which photo you created it so that in the future, if you want to have that specific look, you can refer to that photo which created the preset. I, I did this also for another another photo with the Kodak Hector 25. So there you go. And that is it. So I'm going to say, OK, and you will see that it created two uh, photos. One is the, the modified photo and one is the original. So it's not going to change anything in your original photos. Let's take this Venice shot, for example. So same thing here, edit in the Lightroom plugin. We're going to keep it JPEG. So now one of the things I noticed right away is that we need to increase a little bit the exposure on this photo. There you go. And now we can play around a little bit with the different films. So I'm going to go through a bunch so you can see how they look. Agfa, so these are all Agfa. Uh, Ambro type, this is like back in the day, very much so. Um, here we go. Cine Steel, you have the different uh, temperatures. Fujifilm Eterna, Provia, Velvia, Velvia 50, Fuji Color, there you go. 100, 200, 1600, and so on. So you have really, really um, a lot of choice on here. So I'm gonna go now. Um, I'm going to choose Ilford, Ilford XP2. There you go. So we're going to go with a black and white shot here. So this is how it looks. You can see when I add some grain to this photo, once again, it's going to look amazing. There you go. So it, it really, you can see how it adds the grain and it doesn't add the grain just as a, as a preset or as a lot that just goes on top. It really analyzes the photo, breaks down every section, every color and gives you the grain based on how the colors would look in film. So here we can change the size. You can see it in the water. It's a bit more subtle, but yeah, there you go. And it really gives you that, that old film look. And we're going to play around a little bit with, uh, well, the blooming. You're going to see it up here. I'm not going to add that vignetting. Let's put some vignetting. So I'm going to change the feathering so I can see where the vignette is. Here you go. Reduce a little bit the exposure. I want it to be a bit more on this way. There you go here. And then we're going to change the feathering and lower the exposure. There you go. Before and after. And our last shot here is going to be the bride with the bouquet. And we're going to edit this in the enhancer. Same thing here. Some of them, you see, they're very subtle, but it really gives you that film look. I really like Cinestill 800T, how it looks on this photo. And we're going to go back to a Portrait 800. There you go. So that's how it looks. So once again, we're going to check the black point. We're going to make the black point a bit darker just to give a little contrast, exposure, we go up a little bit, tonal contrast, I'm going to limit it, there you go, color density, film grain, there you go. So that right away gives you an amazing look to your photo, amazing look. Increase the size and the amount, reduce a bit the resolution, once again, to cut the digital look on your photo. And we're going to change a little bit the color head, like so. 
uh, highlation we're gonna put some and here you can see it clearly around her face around the arm right here look before and after you see around the bouquet over here there you go and some vignettes uh, let me see how we're gonna do this there you go I'm gonna feather it a bit there there you go before and after there so that gives you a preview of how the Henser works this is available for Mac and for Windows the price is currently $199 and you get two licenses for that price so two seats basically two computers which is actually a very good price for what it does if there was one improvement I would ask the answer to add or I would change is the fact of being able to import more than one photo at the time so like you do on Lightroom you see the little photos at the bottom I would like to be able to do the same and import a bunch of them and flip between one and the other within the plugin of the answer that way you can rapidly go through several photos for example if you shoot a wedding and you want to add the Kodak Portra 400 to all of your photos you can do so and you can just go to the next one next one next one you click uh, done and it adds that effect to all of your photos at once um, I think you can select several photos edit them in the enhancer and it will apply what you're seeing on one photo to all of your photos but that doesn't necessarily work for me otherwise I was shocked by the results that you get with this program in good um, was very pleasant and uh, I was hooked as soon as I used this program there that was my video on this Dehancer Photoshop and Lightroom plugin I think it really is worth it if you like stock if you like the looks that these guys can give you this plugin is going to give you the closest you can get to that look I see you like always in my next video keep shooting keep smiling keep having fun and take care.